see as go an extraordinary journey of faith across continents that will encourage, enlighten, and empower you to fulfill your God ordained destiny. All rights reserved, no portions of this book may be reproduced, stored in a retrieval system or transmitted in any form or any means, electronic, mechanical, photocopy, recording, scanning, or other, except for brief quotations in review or webs or articles without the prior written permission of the publisher. Published in Malaysia by Dr. Andrew Siesco. All scripture quotations, unless otherwise indicated, are taken from the Holy Bible New International Version. Not copyright 1973, 1978, 1984, 2011 by Biblica Incorporation, Incorporated, used by permission, all rights reserved. Forward, forward by Pastor Paul Chong and Mrs. Amy Chong, London, United Kingdom. Memoirs of a Doctor is the story of Dr. Andrew C.S. Goh's faith journey through life from his humble childhood in Tanjung Malim until his retirement in Ipoh in 2020. He comes from a very poor background, from a very small and insignificant town in Malaysia. Although Andrew's parents were non-Christian, God had sown the seed of the gospel message into his heart as early as primary school in the chapel service through the story of the prodigal son. Through education, he got out of poverty, left Tanjung Malim, and made it good by becoming a medical doctor, a heart specialist, and an internal medicine specialist. He was born again as a Christian in his medical student days, and some years later, while working in Teluk Intan, he rededicated his life to Jesus Christ. On returning to Ipo, he was mentored by two prominent Bible teachers who taught him the whole counsel of God, expositionally from Genesis to Revelation. I was fortunate enough to be his pastor for about 10 years when he worked at the Ibo Specialist Hospital and worshipped at the Holy Cross Lutheran Church Ibo, where I was pastoring. Over the years, Andrew and his family became our family friends, friends as well. Andrew earnestly prayed for his patients before subjecting them to any medical procedures. His medical profession was a tent-making ministry to share the gospel to non-Christians as a marketplace soul winner. It was also a platform to encourage and pray for Christians who needed his services. He loved the Lord, studied, preached, and taught the Bible. In the course of his medical practice, he helped a lot of people in need, both medically and spiritually. He also preached in the Holy Cross Lutheran Church when I was pastoring there. In 1999, upon God's calling, he took a three-year sabbatical leave from his medical practice to study full-time in late law college in Late Law Bible College in Auckland, New Zealand from 1999 to 2001. 
memoirs of a doctor traces his journey of faith all the way from childhood until his retirement in January 2020. It is an inspiring story of how God works in the life of a person who is faithful, obedient, and surrendered to his calling. It is about how God can use a person as his chosen instrument in the kingdom. This book will be a great inspiration to many readers, particularly to those who are just starting out their journey in life. He will no doubt be a legacy to his wife, three sons, three daughters-in-law, five grandsons, four granddaughters, and future generation. I wish him all the best in his golden years as he continue his ministry as an author, preacher, Bible teacher, Bible expositor, blogger, traveler, etc. Pastor Paul Chong and Mrs. Amy Chong, London, United Kingdom, January 2021. Preface. This is a memoir of my life from childhood until retirement. The recollection of my childhood details remain sketchy as the events happened more than half a century ago. The purpose of this book is to document the story of my life as a legacy for my family members, relatives, friends, colleagues, and future generations to read, keep, treasure, and be inspired. Writing this memoir, memoir had, had been on my mind for at least five years, but due to work commitments, I did not have the time nor energy to do it. My retirement in January 2020 gave me the time, motivation, and interest to complete this project. In retrospect, writing this memoir was easier than I thought, and the experience gained was very enriching. It took me slightly more than one month to progress from blank, from blank page to draft manuscript. However, editing and proofreading took a much longer time. I wish to dedicate this book to my late grandfather, Ko Tak, my late father, Ko Kam Sang, my late mother, Wu Cho Lan, my late uncle, Wu Cho Lim, my beloved wife, Chia Wai Yin, my sons, Joseph, Joshua, Joel, my daughters-in-law, Rani, Tina, Angelina, my grandsons, Isaac, Benjamin, Daniel, Josiah, Jonathan, Jonathan, my granddaughters, Giselle, Katie, Annabelle, and Isabel. I thank God for giving me such a fulfilling life and for preserving me through so many dangerous situations. I wish to thank my daughter-in-law, Tina, for her encouragement and support without which this book would never have seen the light of day. My thanks to Dr. Tim Sung, Canon Dr. S. K. Tio, Ruth So, Peggy Xiao, Pastor Peggy Xiao, Pastor Joshua Tan, Joanna Lee, the late Mrs. Jody, the late Mr. Abel, the late Mr. Nagapan, Dato K. R. R. Naidu, Lim Su Ken, Dato Dr. Guna Sigrun, and others for their suggestions. Last but not least, I wish to thank everyone who has contributed to this book in one way or another. Or another. Dr. Andrew Siesco, Ipo, Malaysia, January 2021. Memoirs, A Tale of Two Cities. Tanjung Malim and Auckland. A tale of two countries, Malaysia and New Zealand. A tale of two tenses, the past and the present. 
a tale of two lives, the flesh and the spiritual, a tale of two professions, cardiology and theology, a tale of love and providence, persistence and perseverance, walking and surrendering to the glory of God. Synopsis. Memoirs of a doctor is the story of my life. This story began, began from my birthday on 11 January 1952 until my retirement on Jan 11 January 2020. The purpose of my memoir is to document my life story as a legacy for my family, relatives, and friends. The story traces back to the tough beginnings of the 1950s when life and society was very backward, when industrialization, computerization, social media, and automation was unheard of. Life was slow and leisurely. Letters were sent and read through the postal services. Communication was slow and inefficient. This book is divided into eight chapters, each chapter describing a particular stage of my life, with photos relevant to each chapter and a poem before each chapter. The story unfolds with each chapter and culminates with the testimony of my retirement in the year 2020. There are certainly many valuable life lessons to be learned from a story covering a span of so many years. If any reader is inspired to trust in God, excel in life, and persevere in the face of adversity, this book would have achieved its purposes. purposes. Content, Chapter 1, Growing Up in Tanjung Malim. Chapter 2, Form 6 in Tolu Intan. Chapter 3, Medical Undergraduate in the University of Malaya. Chapter 4, Housemanship in the Ivory Tower. Chapter 5, Typing to Laban. Chapter 6, Ivory Tower, London and Tolungtan. Chapter 7, Malaysia to New Zealand and back. Chapter 8, Retirement and Testimony. Nostalgic Memories. MES Class of 69. 42 years went by in the blink of an eye. Grand Reunion by the riverside, brought back memories of years gone by, memories of Boy Scouts and Girl Guides, came scurrying by, emotions running high, karaoke, dances, wines and dines to keep the night alive. Thank you for the nostalgic night of yesteryears gone by. Chapter 1, Growing Up in Tanjung Malim. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. A tale of two cities, Charles Dickens. I belong to the baby boomer generation. My life story began in the year 1952 when I was born in Tanjung Malim, a very small, insignificant town in the Mualim district of Perak in Malaysia. It is located 70 km, kilometers to the north of Kuala Lumpur and 120 kilometers to the south of Ipoh. Sitting on the perak Slango border, where the Ulu Burnham River provides its natural dividing line. If not for the grace of God. According to my parents, I was born in a shop house where they live. In those days, medical facilities were poor and so was transportation. There was no ambulance services and my parents did not own a car. My mother did not have enough time to rush me to the hospital when she went into labor pain. So I was born at home and my del delivery was assisted, assisted by my mother's friend who happened to be there at the time. My mother was very grateful for this and they became best of friends 
ever since. On looking back, I am convinced that it was God who rescued me. If not for the grace of God, I certainly would not be around to tell you my story. Praise the stars. My grandfather, being the patriarch of the family, patriarch of the family, was assigned the task of giving me a name. He came up, he came up with the name Chan Sing, which means praise the stars in Cantonese. Chan means to praise, and Sing means stars. According to my grandfather, I was born on a night when there were plenty of stars in the sky. So he praised the stars and called me. So he praised the stars and called, called me Chan Sing. To him, I was one of those twinkling little stars in the dark, dark starry night. This reminded me of Vincent Van Gogh's song. Starry, starry night. So this was how I came into this world and how I got my name. The origin of my name reminds, reminded me of the story of Abraham in the book of Genesis. God promised Abraham that he would bless him with posterity. The Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all the people on earth will be blessed through you. Quote unquote Genesis chapter 12, verses 2 to 3. However, after many years went by and still not having any offspring, Abraham was worried. So one day God appeared to Abraham in a vision and gave him a promise that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the night sky. He took him outside and said, look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offsprings be. Quote unquote, Genesis chapter 15 verse 1. Uniqueness of Tanjung Malim. Tanjung Malim was, is a unique town sitting at the border between two states. One half of the town is in the state of Perak and the other half is in Slango. Divided right across the middle by the Ulu Burnham River. Back in those days, even the water in the river was unique. One half of the river was clear while the other half was muddy, clear on the Perak side and muddy on the Slango side. The town is famous for its yik, Yikman Pao, or dumplings, made by the Yikman family, which is still available today. Tanjung Malim is also the home to the famous Sultan Idris Teachers Training College, inaugurated in 1922, now called the Sultan Idris Education University, and the Ringgit 1.8 billion Proton City Township, which houses the Proton Car Assembly Plant, established in 1996. My grandfather. My grandfather came from China in the 1940s from a town called Seiwei in the Guangdong district. He had two sons in China, but for some reason he came to Malaysia with only one son, my father, and my grandfather's wife. Unfortunately, his younger son, my father's youngest brother, 
was left behind in China under the care of relatives. So my father did not have any siblings in Malaysia. My grandmother passed away before I was even born. So I did not have any, so I do not know anything about her. My grandfather was a cobbler. He operated a one-man business, repairing and restoring free love shoes. However, due to alcoholism and opium addiction, he was always living in poverty. He was a kind-hearted man and I love him very dearly. I remembered him taking me to the barber whenever my hair grew a little too long for his liking. He always told the barber to cut my hair really short, much to my anguish. My grandfather passed away eventually due to old age. His death had a profound effect on me because this was the first time that I had experienced the loss of someone really close to me, my mother. My mother originated from another town in Perak called Bido. She came from a rich family background. Her father owned land and plantations in Bido. She was third in a family of six siblings, comprising of two boys and four girls. She was her father's favorite daughter. My parents met through matchmaking, as this was the guest, this was the custom in those days. As alien as it is today, people in those days did not usually fall in love and choose their spouses. Their parents choose life partners and arrange their marriage for them. Number 22, Chong Aping Street. My parents own a tinsmith shop at number 22, Chong Aping Street, which was located in the town center. This shop was still there in its original condition until 2019 when it was torn down and rebuilt. I was fortunate enough to do a photo shoot of this, of this shop house in 2018, with seven of us who lived here in 1958. It was divine, it was a divine providence. It was divine providence, grace, and a miracle that brought us back together for a grand reunion in Tanjung Malim for this historic and rare photo shoot in 2018. Back then we were all kids and I was only six years old when we had our photograph, photographs taken. For the 2018 photo shoot, every one of us stood in front of the shop house according to the same position as in the 1958 photograph. Tough, tough beginnings. I was the youngest in a family of four siblings, three boys and one girl. I have two elder brothers and one elder sister. My second brother passed away peacefully in his sleep in Singapore in 2009 at the age of 59 years. I am now left with one elder brother and one elder sister. My late parents were very poor when we were in Tanjung Mali. The tinsmith business was slow and trading was very difficult. Malaysia was in a deep recession then and the economy was extremely bad. They were always in debt, living a hand-to-mouth existence, living in a hand-to-mouth existence. Existence. 
They were Taoists who were deeply steeped in idolatry and ancestor worship. Growing up in Tanjung Malin was very tough for me due to poverty in extremists. Malaysia and the rest of the world was in a deep recession. Tin, rubber and commodity prices were at all-time lows. We could not afford many things. Even the purchase of food and sundry supplies were on credit. My family was one of the poorest families in Tanjung Malin. We live in a rented shop house. My father rented half the shop downstairs and one of the rooms upstairs. The remaining rooms upstairs were rented out to other tenants. The other half of the shop was rented out to a car and motorcycle repair shop, which was very noisy and dirty. The place was the place that we were living was not conducive for any form of study. The curfew. I remember that there was once a curfew in Tanjung Malim. I think it must have been during the time of the Malayan Communist Party insurgency. We could not go out of the house at certain times of the day. We were under curfew and lockdown. It was much worse than the present COVID-19 pandemic lockdown. I can still vividly remember my late father cooking pigeons for lunch and dinner. In those days, we had pigeons in the house. They flew in by themselves and, we, and when we fed them, more would come. My late parents also read chickens, ducks, geese, and turkeys. Every Christmas, my parents would give turkeys as Christmas presents to the estate manager who was our client. We also planted vegetables for our own consumption. Even though my parents were poor, they provided for all their children's needs. In fact, I don't even remember us starving or lacking food at any time. Good times in Vido. I spent a significant proportion of my childhood days in Vido, where I had many cousins, especially during the school holidays. My cousins were the family, my cousins were the children of my mother's brother, my mother's elder brother and her elder and younger sisters. We had such good times playing games that children played back then, back in those days like marbles, catapults, spiders, hiding fish, tops, kites, and so on. The distance from Tanjung Malim to Bido was only 62 kilometers or 45 minutes drive by car. I used to take a bus on my own from Tanjung Malim to Bido. My late big uncle, my mother's elder brother, was especially good to me because I was good in my studies. He bought many brand new watches for me. In those days, watches were considered expensive items. He was a very good sex saxophonist, often playing in the house, in weddings, in funerals, and other private functions. He could not read music, but played extremely well by ear. He was Bido's equivalent of Teniji. My uncle, my uncle, my late uncle worked as a projection projector operator in a movie cinema theater. Often he would take me and my cousins to watch movies in the theater free of charge. 
Chinese New Year was almost always spent in Bido, and we played firecrackers and received ang paos from all the uncles and the aunties. My auntie, big uncle's wife, would buy breakfast and supper every day for the children without fail. I remembered a massive flood occurring in Tanjung Malim in 1971. The whole town was flooded and the water was up to the waist level in our shop. The flood took many days to subside and it was badly damaged. And it badly damaged our furniture and office equipment. Equipments. Cleaning up after the flood was in itself a great big undertaking. Impetus to succeed. My parents were very superstitious, believing strongly in traditional Chinese medical care and healing by mediums. They were also very involved with Chinese temple worship. His childhood background spurred me on to get a good education, to free myself from the bondage of poverty and to get a better quality of life. It also gave me the ambition to become a doctor at a very young age. I wanted to treat sick patients. I wanted to treat sick people based on proper medical science and not based on superstitious belief system, belief systems. The two local general practitioners near my late father's shop became my role models. According to my parents, when I was a baby, I was very sick with measles, with high fever, dehydration, and I almost died. But miraculously, the fever resolved and I survived. God was there again to preserve my life so that I am now able to tell you my story. <laughs>